Dear friends, the Constitution of India has given a number of freedoms to Indian citizens to assemble peacefully without any arms and without detrimental to the interest of the country. But the government of India for the past six years has been branding all the democratic agitations as anti-nationals. In this video, let us discuss on the historical background of the terminology anti-national. At the outset, I would like to quote in the Constituent Assembly on November 25, 1949, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar has branded caste as anti-nationals. He has interpreted a caste system which has been ogu for centuries together unless or otherwise dismantling the caste system in India there would be no possibility of building a nation state which is based on liberty, equality, fraternity and justice to all the communities. It was a different thing. In the year 1956, there was a formation of states on linguistic lines. The first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, initially has never accepted for this linguistic lines formation of states and opposed it as anti-national, which is very detrimental to the interest of the unity and the interest of the country. But the people have fought together and after that he has accepted for the formation of states on linguistic airlines. It's a different story. In the year 1959, the same Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru has dismissed the first formed government, communist government headed by EMS Nambudiribot in Kerala, branding it as working against the interest of the nation. It's a different story. In the year 1975, the emergency has been proclaimed and it ended only in the year 1977. But the Stimidi Indira Gandhi government has branded all sorts of agitations against her government as anti-nationals. Most of the fundamental rights have been curtailed during that period. Another thing is that in the year 1984, Indira Gandhi was assassinated, but certain Western interests have termed the entirety of Sikh community as anti-national. It's a different story. After a decade, in the year 1990, there had been a number of agitations in northern parts of India for employment opportunities, employment and educational opportunities, 27% reservation as per Mandal Commission report for OBC communities. Those agitation have been branded as anti-national by certain vested and communal forces. In the year 1992, the Babri Masjid was demolished. After the Babri Masjid was demolished, the minorities have been fighting against the injustice, they have been termed as anti-nationals. It is a different story. My point here is that the farmers have been agitating in Delhi and adjacent states and in many parts of the country, most peacefully and democratically, but most of the state ministers ruled by BJP state governments and central ministers have been branding the farmers' agitation as a anti-national. It's a cause of worry. Even in the year 19, 2019, against the Citizenship Amendment Act, most of the university, college students, professors, intellectuals, all the cross-sections of society I have fought against the discriminatory attitude of the central government of India, but they have all been branded as anti-national. My point is that the farmers are agitating in Delhi and surrounding areas and in many parts of the 
country peacefully as per democratic norms as per the rights given by the indian constitution why the government of india is branding them as anti nationals or anti terrorists is a cause of worry the point here is that finally i conclude that most of the people of this country 90% of the people are fighting against the government tribals scheduled castes patients workers middle class people intellectuals and all the cross section students have been fighting for their legitimate and democratic rights instead of hearing and ventilating the genuine grievances of the people branding them as anti national is not justified thank you so much